and welcome to today's demonstration on how to complete the mental health non-psychiatric timeliness record. First, you will open your client's chart. Next, you will click on the search icon and you will start typing MH non and you'll see the form here. Go ahead and click on it. Next, you'll click on the new icon in the upper right hand corner and you will see um, a pop up asking for to specify the CDAG program. Um, so for this, I'm just going to pick a random program. And here is the timeliness record. Next, you'll complete the record. You can save information as you go along. Um, and you can come back to it later um, if you do not have all the data required. You can click the Save button in the upper right hand corner. So first you're going to enter the referral source. This should be the person who referred the client to services. If the client requested services themselves, select Self. Next, you'll enter the date of the first contact. This is the date when the initial request for services was made. You may also enter the time of the first contact as well. This is required when the request is marked urgent. So we'll just enter in a date and a time. If the request was marked urgent or if the services require prior authorization, all the fields are required as timeliness is measured in hours rather than days. Next, enter the first service appointment offer date. This is the first available appointment that was offered to the client, regardless of whether they accepted that appointment or not. For example, if you have an appointment available on Tuesday, January 10th at 9 a.m., but the client says they're unavailable on Tuesdays, you will still enter that you offered an appointment on January 10th at 9 a.m. If the appointment offer date is outside of the timeliness range, you'll enter in that delay. So as you can see, the reason for delay um, is grayed out um, because the, the number of days between January 1st and January 10th are within the timeliness period. So for example, if I were to click urgent, you will now see this box become active. And the same would happen if I were to change this date to say the 16th of January. And now this box becomes active. So um, you will enter a reason here. If you select other, then you'll need to enter a reason here. So I'll select a reason. Next, enter the first service appointment rendered date. 
This is the date the client actually had their first appointment. If a client accepts an appointment but doesn't show to that appointment, then a service has not yet been rendered and that date should not be entered here. If the client never actually starts services, leave this field blank. The next section is for the follow-up. If a follow-up appointment was not offered for any reason, click on the followed-up appointment not offered checkbox. This will gray out the rest of the follow-up section. If a follow-up appointment is offered, enter the first follow-up appointment offered date. This is the date first available appointment that was offered to the client after their first rendered service appointment. So I'm just going to select a follow-up date. If the follow-up offered appointment is outside the timeliness range, the the quote documentation of clinical appropriateness field will become available. Document the clinical appropriateness of delaying follow-up care or indicate where in the client's record this is documented. For example, if it's documented in a progress note, you can simply write quote see progress note dated January 10th, 2024. If the follow-up offered appointment is outside of the timeliness range, indicate whether or not the client was referred to an out-of-network provider. This does not include contract providers who provide specialty mental health services, but rather other agencies and providers who do not contract with the county. If you answer yes, provide the details of the referral. Enter the first follow-up appointment rendered date. This is the date the client actually had their first follow-up appointment. If a client accepts an appointment but doesn't show to that appointment, then a service was not rendered and that date should not be entered here. If the client never attends a first follow-up, leave this field blank and A record is considered complete when a client has had a first follow-up appointment rendered. At this point, click Sign in the upper right corner to complete the record. Then you may close the screen. Next, sometimes a client does not complete the admission process. If a client starts the process, such as makes a request for services, but doesn't complete it, such as they don't attend a follow-up appointment, then you will close the record without it being complete. Closure section, enter the closure date, this is the date you've determined the client will not complete the admission process. Next, you'll enter the closure reason. These reasons generally indicate which step in the process the client exited. If you select Other, enter a description of the reason in the text field indicated. Once you've completed the closure section, click Sign to finalize the record, 
and you may close the screen. For further details on completing this record, for a step-by-step step-by-step walkthrough of this, you can go to at 2023.calmesa.org and you can find all the instructions here. For any further questions, you may email DBH Quality Improvement. Their email address is DBH Quality Improvement at Fresno County CA. Dot .gov Thank you